Richard here with Clutches and Crafts Plus, shooting the third intro to the third portion of the video where I rant about outdated manuals and techniques for the ShopSmith product line and then deal with a restriction, a defect on my table that was preventing me from getting it aligned and I believe anybody from getting it aligned for that matter. And then second video I move into the scratch method using a single rod and miter and then amp it up in my own personal special way of course and attempt to measure it on standard axes, guessing maybe I'm accurate, maybe it's straight, being doubtful. Here we are, third video, and I have spent some time contemplating what we're working with, and I have devised what I believe to be a superior method of indexing the face of the disc that will give us three points of reference and two lines with some very tight tolerances on the surface, improving our chances of using a micrometer to align our miter uh, slots as well as increasing our accuracy, hopefully with our squares on the surface of the disc, so far as being able to set our stops. Uh, I believe it to be superior. You tell me what you think. Leave a comment. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you are returning, thanks for hanging out. Again, I really appreciate you coming back. Drop me a comment, drop me a like, and let's see what you think. Okay. After a lot of contemplation as to how it was uh, reasonable to use a disc that was not absolutely flat as a reference point, given that this right here is my zero, my lowest surface, and this is my uh, opposite low, you know, logically, but it's five uh, higher than there and my others. So how do you guess where, where, where it is? But uh, what I did was I measured out until I got to a five as well on either side of my zero. So now I'm measuring from equal heights and I have indicated that with a line there and for my sweep. And I have um, worked quite <laughs> A number of times to get this thing set up to try and, to where I can adjust just this knob to change the the elevation to be able to do both sweeps. But I'm going to start with this one uh, as it seems to be the one that's closest to telling me that my table is aligned. Again, which one's correct? Uh, I suppose it's a matter of preference. Now we are at zero, and I will try without. And that is a negative 0 0.001, negative one thousandths. So here we are back to half a thousandth and to zero. So there's a little bit of wiggle in the fitment of the minor gauge. Just don't know how to get rid of when something this sensitive is on it. Again, <laughs> just that little bit of play there. But go back. Adjust. Try really, really hard not to. Negative point five, half a thousandth. If we can believe that that thing's accurately measuring a half a thousandth, negative half thousandths. Zero again. Thousands. 
I don't know how to get any more accurate with what is here. So this is my argument why a scratch method will get you so far, but it will not get you to the finish line because it takes this level of pre precision to know what you're working with as a reference in order to even decide where to base your parallel on. So as a, as a quick reference with two squares, very basic tools that almost everybody has, it's very easy to I'm going to use this one is much older, it's much more beat up, uh, and it's more likely to have the corners dinged up than down, obviously, from being dropped. So rather than reference against this side, I'm going to use the bottom, and then that will allow me to use this as a slide, and you're just gonna try and hold everything nice and smooth against each other, and move on over until you come up to your touch point. Verify. You plant that one f uh, flat there, and you plant this one flat here. When you bring them towards each other, any variance will become evident in this gap here. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about the benefits of having indexed our disc uh, so very thoroughly, as opposed to just using where my high spots are in the scratch method is that when it comes time to set your uh, parallel, we now have a ton more reference points. So I want to point out that uh, this tool, however old it is from my curb find, is a verifiable tool. Put it on the board, draw a line, flip it over, draw a line, etc. But this style is important because if you were to use a 90 that only sat at the top and went from the center up, you have all these high spots and low spots, but none of them match your center. So it would always end up making you think, oh, well, it needs to tilt one way or the other. But by going all the way across the surface of the disc, you can then hit your high spots or your low spots respectively. So previous suggestions have been to use the uh, low spot in between your high spots as your reference for uh, parallel and it will work and maybe if you had a disc that had two low spots that were very similar in height like uh, my high spots are you know five half a thousandths of an inch apart from each other basically whereas my low spots are five thousandths apart it's not really the best option there. But now that we have these other marks where we do know we're going to from, on my case, five thousandths to five thousandths, we can now use our um, tools to apply. It's contacted at the top and contacted at the bottom, but with a gap in between because as previously demonstrated with the measuring whatnot, these, these are not flat. So that's one reference point. We can now go to our second reference point. light on this side does not help me it's only for the camera touching at the top touching at the bottom with our standard gap this is as close to 90 and if you really want to go over the top you can say turn it over do this one again here Touching at the top and the bottom and then back to here. So 
So now, because these aren't perfectly uh, at the same height, and like just as I had to adjust my measurement up and down when I was doing my sweeps across, I have referenced the disc in two separate positions, both in the front and back, from my five, my known fives. And if you really want to, yeah, you can come and look at your your low to low, um, and it looks pretty good. I wouldn't say it's as good as the others. But if you were to use, say, as I said, just a 90, then you might be more inclined to think, oh, well, wait a second, I'm touching at the top, but I'm not touching in the middle, so I need to adjust. So it's very important that you want to make your, your measurement from edge to edge all the way across. And that is how I would suggest you uh, Go about setting your your uh, table to be at a 90 to your work surface and then you can come back in and adjust your stops appropriately it is already adjusted it's actually still popped out locked in this position I don't know that there's much else I can add to this process I have to now go and align my side table which should be pretty close in height already but I'm positive it now needs to be adjusted uh, with its toe and then maybe even some front to back uh, after this was done. That is next. I guess we can put that in this video. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so I, I tried to get the camera at an angle that, so you can see the gap and uh, the nuts underneath the table. Now, it is a 916. There are two sets here, and you might think I absolutely have to have two uh, wrenches to be able to tighten it down. But I think you'll find that it's not necessary. I'm starting by backing off my bottoms. Um, I am very close, but that lets it get loose, and I can see how far off I am. All right, I think that's a good shot. So I'm closest in the back, and I'm literally just going to give some hand turns to these nuts. Looking for a light gap. All right, now, now that we're very close to level, it's time to at least take and pay attention to our front to back, side to side, and then check it again, because you just wiggled it around. I'm feeling good about that. Now, the trick here is that you know, you think that you just bring these bottom nuts up and that's restart, but you can't just tighten them down because it'll start to pull the table around. So I'm getting them all up to finger tight on the bottoms. And when I did that, I got a little gap over here on this side. Now I'm gonna see which one fixes that. If I do the bottom one, it will pull it down. If I tighten the top nut, it will make up for that little bit of gap that it created. And I tried to tighten the top nut on the other side and it raised me up, so. I need to tighten the bottom nut to bring it back down. And every time you tighten one of these, top and bottom, it's going to move it up and down just a little bit, so you gotta go back and forth. And I've done, snug these up, not totally, but I've gotten across the front and I'm confident it's a little bit better 
it's not going to move on me. And then I'm going to take a look at what happened back here. And then double check my finger tight. I'm a little up here, high up there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the top nut, which will not only tighten it, but it will bring the table up ever so slightly. And now I'm going to do the top nut on the other side, just a smidge, and then see Put my difference to the bottom. Snugger and snugger. That's tight, and then one last check across my rails. Now we're done. Spot on. That's good to me.